Hey everyone, how's it going? Forrest here, again with another installment of my complete analysis of all of JS Box crawl harmonizations. Today we're looking at Via Glauben Allein Einen Gott, which translates to We All Believe in One God. This crawl is all over the place. There's tons of harmonic changes, lots of direct modulations, and a couple of interesting things to talk about, but Really, this corral is a bit of a marathon because it's two and a half pages in length, at least in the way that I format it here in Landscape. So we're just going to hop right into the analysis. I did make a couple of typos. I tried my best to correct them just with pencil because I didn't want to reprint multiple pages. Um, but I'll talk, I'll reiterate, you know, what the corrections were when I get there. Um, no key signature. We start with kind of a D minor chord it starts with like its own sort of soprano note there so um yeah I'm gonna say that it's D minor and we end on D major so I reckon we're in the key of D major the overall t uh, tonality of the chorale is D major um, it's kind of interesting that there's uh, no key signature because typically our modern sensibilities tell us that one flat in the key signature means D minor but Bach used key signatures pragmatically so it's not always an indicator of what key we're in let me make that d look more like a d and less like an a start off with our tonic triad passing tones in the lower voices and i'm going to be going kind of quickly through this corral because i don't want it to take an hour and 45 minutes like some of my previous videos have because in proportion to the length of the corral there really isn't that much to talk about there's definitely some interesting stuff in this corral but only really by virtue of the fact that it's a longer corral so um, anywho, passing tones in the lower voices, we get our tonic triad and first inversion here, F, A, uh, D, and A. No need to reiterate the Roman numeral there. And then we get our tonic triad and root position a little bit here on the end of the beat. Uh, D and F are both chord tones. We then get B flat, D, F, and G. A little bit of a chord that... Uh, pops up kind of motivically in this chorale is 465. Not the most common chord, it's not alien to Bach by any means, but definitely is relatively uncommon. Um, G is a chord tone, E is a non-chord tone, D is a chord tone. We then get C sharp, G, E, and A, which is 565, A7 over C sharp. F is a non-chord tone, E is a chord tone. Then we get uh, C sharp, A, E, and E, which is just taking our chord and removing the seventh. It's still an A major foundation chord. This time it's just a triad. There's no seventh. But then we get um, B, which is a non-chord tone here. D, which is a non-chord tone. And very briefly here on the 16th note, we get the chord in just root position. Um, it's, it's like semantics at that point, really. You don't even need to mark that, but I'm going to put it there just to be consistent with the analysis I've at least been doing recently. And then we have D, A, D, and F, which is our tonic triad, D minor in root position, passing tone in the bass. Then we get root position, or sorry, first inversion, F, A, D, and F. No need to reiterate the Roman numeral. Uh, D is briefly taking the chord and putting it in root position again. And then we have a 4-3 suspension half cadence here with uh, A major, A, A, C sharp and E, which is our dominant in root position. Next phrase stays in the key of D minor. We end in a perfect authentic cadence. We start the phrase off with uh, B natural, D, D, and G, which is G major over B. That's four, six, melodic minor here in the bass. So a four chord is not minor, it's major when you harmonize the melodic minor scale. We have C sharp, A, E, and G usually paired with 4-6 in this ascending fashion, is a 5-6-5 five, five chord when we're looking at melodic minor, but bare minimum we have 4-6 going to 1. There's always the leading tone connecting there. I say always, virtually always. There was one case where 4-6 went to 1 without the leading tone, and that was an interesting video. I forget what um, chorale that was, but um, I definitely encountered it exactly once. I remember that. But yeah, like I said, we get our tonic triad here. D, A, E and F, 9-8 suspension over the bass, very common over tonic triads, also common over D minor chords. If, you know, we're not seeing a tonic triad get this 9-8 suspension treatment, it's very common for D minor chords just in general to get it. So here we see it, uh, the 9-8 suspension sort of operating in double here. And then the 
uh, F here in the bass and the resolution turns the chord into first inversion, no need to reiterate the Roman numeral. We then get G, B flat, D, and E, which is E minor 7 flat 5 over G. We would expect that paired up with some type of 5 chord, which we do get on the end of the beat, A, A. Uh, G is actually a chord tone, so we don't have to mark it. Then we get C sharp and E, which is A major. It's our 5 chord. Then we get B flat, F, D, and D, which is our 6 chord, B flat major. Uh, C is a known chord tone. B flat is a chord tone. G, G, B flat, and D. I guess we do kind of get a four chord here. Really, when we have thirds based chord progressions that are happening in a subdivided context like this, that is to say that they're happening over the span of one beat, or you're taking the harmonic rhythm and um, dividing it into multiple parts. When the chords are a third apart, it's kind of difficult to say whether or not there's a chord progression happening, but I'm inclined to say that there is in this case just because the bass is moving especially. So um, I will mark that. We also get G doubled, if anything, just for a very brief moment. But F and B flat are both chord tones, so we don't have to mark those. We then get A, E, A, and C sharp, which is our five chord, A major passing tone here. A little chordal seventh there as well before we get D, F, A, and D, which is our tonic triad and root position. Another 4-3 suspension cadence. Okay, next phrase, we modulate to the key of A minor and we start to get some more interesting chords, all things considered. We start off with D minor again, D, D, F, and A, so we don't need to reanalyze. Passing tones in the alto and the bass, F, A, D, and A, just taking our tonic triad and inverting it, and then putting it right back to root position on the end of the beat. Um, and I do think that this is where we modulate to the key of A minor because we're seeing G sharps on the next beat anyways So we're just going to call this 4-6 because D minor is also the subdominant in the key of A minor And then we get B, G sharp, E, and D I think F, uh, D, and A A is sort of like a 7-6 suspension You could analyze this as 2, I guess But there's really no F here except for a very brief reference to it here on the last 16th note of the beat 1 so I think this is probably some type of 5 chord, 7, 4, 3 maybe, or a 7, 6, 5. Either way, there's some type of dominant happening here. We would expect that after 4 anyways, and we would expect that to go to our tonic, which it does, C, A, E, and C, A minor in first inversion, passing tone in the bass before we get E, G, E, and B. It's actually G sharp carried over earlier from the measure, so that's our five chord. Uh, C is a non chord tone. C is a non chord tone. We kind of get C, C, E, and B here, almost like a major seven chord, like a three seven chord, but we don't quite get it. It wouldn't make sense in this context, too, because we have three going to six, which is a normative cycle of falling fifths progression that we would expect to see in box writing from time to time. But um, because the chord's not spelled entirely, it's missing the fifth. Um, because it's a chord that's off of the harmonic rhythm, I'm not going to analyze it. But that's why videos are really helpful, because I can talk through my thought process. Uh, we get F, C, E, and A, which is 6, 7, F major 7 in root position. Uh, B, uh, D, and B are all non-chord tones. A is a chord tone, so we don't have to mark it. But coincidentally, this is B... Uh, diminished over F, which is uh, 7, 6, 4. The inversion doesn't really matter too much because um, the bass just happens to be static. It's more so the Roman numeral that matters when there are subdivided chord progressions happening. Um, when the bass doesn't move, it just so happens that it's in a second inversion, which is pretty uncommon, but it's not anything really to write home about. But afterwards, we get E, G sharp, E, and C. We get our first augmented triad, one of many in this chorale. C augmented over E, 3, 6. And on the end of the beat, we get D, A, F, and C, which is D minor 7 in root position. Very interesting chord progression here. Just sort of scaffolding the scale from 3, 4, and then presumably to 5. E, A, F, and B. We have a double suspension going on here. Uh, where we have a 4-3 suspension in the tenor and a 9-8 suspension in the alto, where we get 
E major, E, G sharp, E, and B here with a little passing seventh in the uh, alto as well before we get our perfect authentic cadence in the key of A minor where we cadence on the tonic. In the next phrase, we move back to the key of D minor eventually, but the beginning of the phrase is undeniably C major-like to me, so I think that we get a direct modulation. Um, you could even say that we have a common chord modulation here, but I think after the gap, uh, something feels separate between the G sharps from A minor and just the C major chord that we get here um, at the beginning. So I'm just going to call this a direct modulation. At this point, it's really just semantics. I don't think one, uh, one um, analysis is any more correct than the other, but this uh, E minor chord here, E, G, E, and B is three in the key of C major passing tones in the lower three voices that gives us uh, what I've been calling a transitive chord progression, D, F, F, and B. That is to suggest that it goes against the grain of the cycle of falling fifths. It goes the opposite direction. It goes upstream. And um, seven typically goes to three following the narrative of the falling fifth. But uh, that same voice leading can take you from three to seven because the chords are uh, adjacent to each other in the sequence, and seven operates like a dominant, so why not just use that uh, same voice leading to take you from three to seven, and then from seven presumably to one, C, E, G, and C. I think it's an interesting uh, thing that Bach does with quite a bit of frequency. And then we get E, G, E, and C, which is just taking our tonic triad and inverting it. No need to reiterate the Roman numeral. And then we get F major, F, A, C and uh, A, which is our four chord in the key of C major, and this is where I think we go to the key of D minor because we get C sharp on the next beat. Um, but yes, yeah, so we get a passing tone in the alto, and then we have a C sharp, A, E, and A, which is our five chord in first inversion. Three going to five, six is uh, actually kind of a common chord progression that occurs when the common chord between the two keys uh, results in the three of the minor key that we're going to, especially in uh, five and first inversion I've found. So we get neighbor tones in the alto and the bass before we get the same chord again, C sharp, A, E, and E. No need to re-analyze uh, because we've just analyzed the same chord. Then we have a little delayed passing seventh here, A is a chord tone, uh, C sharp is a chord tone, and this actually gives us a root position um, a7 chord very briefly, so we'll change the figured bass there to reflect that, and then we would expect to get D minor afterwards. D, F, A, and F, so tonic triad. A is a chord tone, so we don't need to mark it. Uh, this is a little C sharp here. C natural made it into the score, unfortunately, but it is a C sharp, and um, there is sort of like some passing dominance going on here because the leading tone makes it um, into the mix, and with A, G, and C sharp, there's room there for um, uh, interpretation if you feel like there's like some type of passing dominant, but I feel like it's more of a sound rather than something that can be analyzed truthfully because F is being maintained here in the melody, which makes the chord kind of difficult to analyze. But afterwards we have F, A, D, and F, which is just taking our tonic triad and putting it in first inversion then back to root position here, noticing kind of a theme with how the, the bass is working after the first inversion triad. And then we get a half cadence at the end here, 4-3 half cadence. We get a lot of 4-3 suspensions here um, in this chorale. A, A, C sharp, and E, that's A major in root position. Okay, moving on to the next phrase, we stay in the key of D minor here, and kind of similar to the first system, we have a perfect authentic cadence following our half cadence. So the phrase starts off with B flat major, B flat, F, D, and D, which is our sixth chord, passing seventh on the bass, we have passing tones, one of them is a passing seventh on the tenor, and then we get G, B flat, D, and E, which is E minor seven flat five over G. Six going to two is a very normative progression. Then we have a, which is a non-chord tone, A, which is a non-chord tone, and C sharp from earlier in the measure, which is our five chord, just a six, two, five, and then presumably one uh, progression, very common, much more common in cadential situations, but we see that here it is at the beginning of the phrase. We have D, F, A, and F, passing seventh in the bass, uh, and we have passing tones here in the alto as well, B flat and C, some natural minor, which is kind of interesting in an ascending configuration like this. 
We then have B flat, F, D, and G, which is another 4, 6, 5 chord, uh, G minor 7 over B flat. And then we get uh, C, which is a non-chord tone, E, which is a non-chord tone, C, which is a non-chord tone, and G, which is a non-chord tone, which gives us a C major. It's like a 7 chord, so 4 typically does go to 7, but we would expect a diminished 7th chord here because we're in, um, well, minor, and minor usually has that artificial leading tone that's uh, um, injected to give it that uh, sense of dominance that the scale otherwise lacks. Uh, but what's kind of interesting here is that we're seeing this operate more like a cycle of falling fifths progression, basically starting on six, six, two, five, one, four, seven. But seven, the way that I learned how to analyze seven in the first book that I ever learned uh, harmony from was analyzing it as five of three, um, because it often resolves to three, like it does in this case. But we find in Bach that that's not always the case, and sometimes this uh, is not. Um, an accurate analysis as a result. So we have F major here, F, F, C, and A. So the cycle continues. Um, and here we get a uh, passing tone here. We have um, A, which is a chord tone. We kind of have A, E, C sharp, and A, which is like a five chord uh, here in um, root position. You can make, maybe make an argument that that G is technically in the bass and that this is an irregular 4-2 resolution. I've talked a lot about 4-2 chords and how they resolve in previous videos, um, but really the big takeaway here is that the 4-2 chord, if this were a 4-2 chord, is resolving upwards and pretty much all 4-2 chords resolve down. And I think that this is more just a brief passing tone than it is the established and implied base of the chord. I feel like A makes a lot more sense here. But afterwards we get B flat, D, D, and G, which is G, yeah, B flat from earlier in the measure. I just wanted to make sure this wasn't B natural. Uh, that would be 4, 6, which would be um, G minor over B flat. A is a non-chord tone. Then we have uh, G, B flat, E and G. I guess you can make the argument that very, very, very briefly we get a 2-6 chord that's happening here. I don't think it's too big of a deal when something's happening over a 16th note. It's minutia. In previous videos, I've just skipped chords like that because they really don't make too much of an impact on the harmony, especially when the chords are a third apart. They're so similar already. They're functioning the same way, usually speaking. But after this chord, whatever's happening here on the end of the beat, we have A, C sharp, E, and F natural, which is kind of interesting. Um, I guess, technically speaking, what's going on here is we have some type of augmented triad. Um, F uh, major 7 sharp 5 over A, which would be a 3, 6, 5 chord. Um, F is a chord tone. A is a chord tone. D is a chord tone. It's almost like we have like a kind of like a suspension going on here, but really what's being suspended um, all these are more or less consonant intervals except for between the, oh no, that's not true. There might be a 2-3 suspension between the alto and the melody here, um, where the 3-6 chord turns into 1-6 here on the end of the beat because we have F, A, D, and F. But I think, interestingly enough, this augmented chord is creating a, like a, a dissonant, unstable chord that wants to resolve to 1 regardless, so... I will analyze it as such. And 2 going to 3 is a somewhat common chord progression as well. It's not so much 4 going to 3, but again, you know, those two chords kind of more referential than really happening because of how brief it is, but regardless, it is what it is. Um, on the next beat, we have a G, B flat, D, and E, which is 2, 6, 5. We know that Bach loves 2, 6, 5 chords, especially in cadential contexts. We have A, A, C sharp, a little passing seventh as well, which is a chord tone for E minor seven flat five. So we'll leave it, but we would expect a five chord after our two six five chord. And that's exactly what we get. Um, a major in root position on the end of the beat. It's a subdivided cadential progression. And then we cadence on D minor, D, F, A, and D. Tonic triad, root position. Okay, moving to the next phrase, we have a bit of room for debate here. Um, I'll move the first page just to show you. We end in 
I believe the key of, well no, actually there's not a ton of room for debate. I was confusing this cadence for one that happens uh, later on the same page. This is, ends in a plagal cadence in the key of D minor, but what makes it interesting is the fact that we end on a D major chord after tonicizing G minor, which makes it kind of have half cadential qualities. And if you listen to the chorale, you'll hear here that there's something you'll hear here. Did I say that right? That felt weird saying here twice. Um, both of them having different meanings. That was kind of strange to say. Anywho, per, uh, plagal cadence here, which is kind of interesting. I'm pretty convinced that we're in the key of D minor here, but there is an argument that maybe we're in the key of G minor. Who knows? But we start the phrase off in the key of C major, interestingly enough. Uh, direct modulation, in my opinion. You could make the argument that there is a direct... Um, actually, is this a direct modulation? I'm going to make the argument that this is a common chord modulation, that D minor is our two chord in the key of C major, because we do start off with five either way, so might as well. G, G, B, and D. Uh, passing tones in the alto and the bass, B, G, D, and D. That's just inverting the chord. And in similar fashion, we just get the chord in root position on the end of the beat. Then we get C major, C, G, C, and E, which is our tonic triad, passing tone here in the tenor. And then we get G, B, D, and D, which is our five chord and root position again. That, again, gets turned into first inversion on the end of the harmonic rhythm. B, G, G, and D. And then we move to the next page. Just give me a second to uh, alter my notes. Thank you so much for watching the video, by the way. I really appreciate it. Um, so yes, moving on to the next page, we have um, another C major chord. We have E, C, G, and E. That's one six. And there really isn't a super elegant way to analyze this modulation, but I think Bach is being kind of crafty here with the chords. And I think the intention is kind of like a skewed, chromatic line what's going on here harmonically speaking because if we say that this is our seven chord in the key of d minor not five of three but our subtonic seventh with the trajectory being our tonic i think what ends up happening here is we get this c sharp in conjunction with this c that's going on in the tenor so we have c going to c sharp and presumably that c sharp goes to d uh, so the lines are a little uh separated we have the beginning of it with uh the tenor and then it gets carried into the melody on the end of the beat we have f a a and e kind of like a uh, three chord which would make sense after a seven chord like seven of uh, seven of three like i was just saying but not entirely referenced so i'm not going to analyze it so i take that back this is kind of like seven of three that's more of a coincidence than anything else but we get uh g e b flat and C sharp, which is um, C sharp fully diminished seventh over G. So it'd be a seven, four, three chord. So we have subtonic seventh going to uh, fully diminished seventh, which is just taking the chord and raising the root basically. Turns from like a dominant to uh, like a dominant seven chord to a fully diminished seventh. And then um, E is a chord tone, G is a chord tone. So I don't have to mark them. It's kind of like taking the chord removing the seventh and putting them in first inversion so we could change the figured bass to reflect that and then instead of going to our tonic triad we go to a chord that shares the same root but we go to d major d d uh, sorry f sharp d a and d which would be five six of four so here we see our tonic operating as the dominant of four d is a chord tone C is our passing seventh, or like it's our chordal seventh. It's going to just turn into a suspension in the next beat. Um, and then we have F sharp, which is also a chord tone, so we don't have to mark it. And that turns into our four chord, G, C, which is a four, three suspension, G, D. So it's our root position four chord here. And then our plagal cadence in the key of D minor ends not with a minor chord, like we would typically expect, but with a major chord, D, A, F sharp and D. So I think is super interesting about this cadence, or I guess what is super interesting about this cadence is that we have a D major chord here, and here it's not functioning as our tonic, but here our D major chord is functioning as our tonic because this is in this context is a plagal cadence and the D major chord is um, being arrived at after four.
So maybe this is a uh, half cadence in the key of G minor, and this D major chord is just five. Um, but I feel like we're in the key of D minor. D feels like a tonic here to me, and this just sounds like kind of a wonky cadence. Um, definitely hipper than a lot of the more typical cadences that we would expect in uh, Bach's chorale writing, but definitely um, an unusual part of this chorale that was worth talking about. Okay, moving to the next phrase, we end with a half cadence in the key of D minor, but we start the phrase off in A minor, we can tell because of the G sharps and the B naturals going on. Not that B natural is always an indicator, but we also have a C natural as well, which tends to be a bit more of an indicator. So we start the phrase off probably with a direct modulation. D could be the um, four, it could be the subdominant in the key of A minor, but only if the context is right in here. I don't really feel like the context is right. It feels kind of disconnected. They feel like separate ideas. So we start off with our tonic and first inversion, C, A, E, and E, passing tones in the bass and the alto before we get E, E, G sharp, and B, which is our five chord. E is a chord tone, D is our passing seventh, and then we get E, C, A, and C, which is a tonic triad in second inversion, one, six, four. Passing tones in the lower voices, which leave us with F, D, a and C, which is kind of like another four, uh, four, six, five chord. I told you that this uh, chord would kind of make uh, several appearances in this chorale, and it's not a super common chord, but Bach has definitely used it in the past. We then get G, E, C sharp, and A. So you could make the argument that this A minor chord is a, you know, like a minor dominant that takes us to the key of D minor, but I feel like this is one of those modulations that happens after the tonicization just because of the virtue of the chords that happen before it. Um, so I'm going to say that this is um, A7 over G, which in this case is 542 of 4 because D minor is the 4 of A minor. Uh, e is a chord tone that briefly takes the chord and turns it into a 6-4 chord, removes the 7th, and then we go to D minor in first inversion, which is 4-6, which is also our tonic in the key of D minor, F, A, D, and A. We then have A, A, D, and E. We know this D is a 4-3 suspension over the bass. 4-3 suspensions are super common over tonic triads especially, or sorry, dominant triads especially. The chord very briefly turns into a 4-2 chord here, 7-4-2, um, because we get G, A, C sharp, and E. So we would expect that to go to our tonic triad where there's that passing seventh in the bass, F, A, D, and F, more specifically our tonic triad in first inversion the vast majority of the time, passing tone in the bass, and then we get D, A, D, and F, which is just taking our tonic triad and putting it in root position. No need to reiterate the Roman numeral. G is a non-chord tone. C sharp is a non-chord tone with a D and F. It's not really an analyzable chord with the B. It's kind of like um, our seven chord, but I don't really feel like it's that big of a, or it's like our, uh, yeah, it is kind of like our seven chord very briefly going on here, and I will mark that maybe, maybe that is what's going on, but I feel like at this point it's semantics, and it's kind of a, it, it's a it's a very specific, uh, specific perspective. Sorry, those two words were hard to say with one another, um, but really the big deal is that we have uh, our uh, five chord happening here, where we have A, A, C sharp, and E, and actually realize that I'm confusing keys here. This would be 7, 4, 3 of 5, so maybe it's being preceded by this little idea of its own dominant, if anything, very briefly, because this C sharp happens right as the secondary leading tone occurs. But regardless, our half cadence um, ends with a 5 chord like we would expect, because that's what a half cadence is. A, A, C sharp, and E, A major in root position. Moving on to the next phrase, we move to the key of A minor, and there is a bit of a typo here. There should be a D sharp and not an E flat, uh, but I do think this is a direct modulation. This uh, A major, you know, could be common between A major and A minor, I suppose, but C natural versus C sharp just feels like two separate ideas to me. But we end with a tonic triad root position. That'd be a perfect authentic cadence with the tonic and the melody. We start off with A minor over C, C, A, 
E and A, which is one six, passing tones in the lower voices that lead us to E, C, E, and G sharp, which is another augmented triad. That would be three plus six. And then we get um, B, which is the chordal seventh, which is a non-chord tone, and D, which kind of leaves us with a five, four, three chord here, E seven over B. If you take the aggregate of all the tones, and then we get C, A, E, and A, which is our tonic triad and first inversion again, passing tone here in the tenor. And then we have D, A, F, and B, which uh, I guess there's room for debate here. This G sharp could be the seventh of the scale, could be the leading tone, D, A, F, and B. I'm going to hedge my bets and say that this is um, actually a... Uh, it's, it really is a toss-up because what happens afterwards is, you know, uh, unusual anyways. So I'm just going to go with what I already analyzed it as, which is a 2-6-5 uh, chord, B minor 7 flat 5 over D. Um, but you could also analyze this as a 7-4-3 chord, or that would be fully diminished 7th because that is an F natural and not an F sharp. But on the next beat, we get D, A, F, and C, which is 4-7, D minor 7 root position. So either way, we have a transitive progression or a third spaced progression, which are both uh, relatively speaking uncommon. We see them with quite a bit of frequency, but in comparison to more normative progressions that are roots that are uh, adjacent to one another or a fourth apart, it's much more common to see um, those types of progressions rather than either of these. So there's a talking point whichever way you reason this chord progression. But then we get D sharp, A, F sharp, and C, this cr little, little chromatic bass line here, which is a D sharp fully diminished seventh, uh, which would be a secondary dominant. It would be 7-7 seven, seven of 5, because D sharp is the leading tone to E, and E is our dominant in the key of um, A minor. And then we get a continued chromatic bass, oh, sorry, chromatic line here in the alto, where we get a minor dominant, E, E, G, and B, which uh, turns into a dominant chord of sorts when the bass changes. C is a non-chord tone. G sharp would technically be a non-chord tone too, which leaves us with C, E, G sharp, and B, which is a root position uh, augmented, or like a major seven sharp five chord, C augmented seventh. And then we get F, E, A, and A, which is kind of like a seven, uh, six, seven chord without the fifth. Um, F major 7, happening after a 3 chord that's following the cycle of falling fifths, so that makes sense from a root bass perspective. Then we have D and A, which is, a non, which is also a chord tone, so we don't have to mark it, which kind of takes the chord, turns it into D minor in first inversion. Not a tremendous deal. Um, yeah, the chords are basically the same in terms of function and pitch content, so not a huge deal. Then we get E, E. B and G sharp, which is our five chord, E major, uh, D is our chordal seventh here that turns into a four three suspension over our tonic here at the cadence A E, um, C natural, uh, B and D just provide an enclosure, so we have A minor in root position. All right, moving right along to an incredibly unusual cadence. Um, honestly, it's not the most interesting cadence in this chorale. Uh, interestingly as well, but it is a cadence that offers room for multiple perspectives, and I think no one perspective is correct, but I'll offer the two uh, scenarios that I think that this cadence sort of fulfills. Uh, but we start the phrase off in the key of D minor. I think it's just a direct modulation where we have E, G, G and B natural, which would be a two chord in the key of D minor, no diminished because it is melodic minor going on here in the melody, passing tone in the alto before we get A, A, E, and C sharp, which is our five chord. G is our chordal seventh that turns into a suspension here, it leaves us with D, A, F, and D, 
which is a 4-3 suspension over our tonic triad, which is kind of interesting because 4-3 suspensions are much more common over dominant triads in the middle of the phrase, but we do see them from time to time over tonic triads. They don't, uh, dominant triads don't like rule the roost and own the 4-3 suspension. It just so happens to be more common with those types of chords. And then the resolution, this actually kind of feels like a cadence. I had to double check and see whether or not a fermata belonged here, but it doesn't. It just feels like there's a cadence and this is just a short phrase. But um, yeah, moving on to the next, I guess, phrase fragment. We have D, D, F, and A, which is our tonic triad again. No need to reanalyze. Passing seventh in the bass, B flat, D, F, and G, another one of these four, six, five chords I was talking about. And then we have C, C, E, and G, which is like a subtonic seventh again. Um, the, yeah, the B flat, I guess you could technically say there's a seven there, but you could also analyze this as five of three. Um, but actually, I'm going to exclude that because this is actually what I was talking about earlier of a case where we have a subtonic seventh that isn't resolving to a three chord. It's actually just going to our tonic D minor. Uh, D, A, uh, sorry, F, A, D, and A with that 7-6 suspension over the chord in first inversion here. But in typical Bach fashion, he changes the bass by the time we get the resolution, but we still know that a tonic triad's being implied here. But afterwards, we get A, A, D, and E, which is our five chord in root position, 4-3 suspension here in the alto. They're very common over dominant triads in root position. And then we get our tonic triad again. D, A, D, and F, this time in root position. Passing tones in the lower voices. Actually, a bit of a neighbor tone here in the tenor. So passing in the bass, neighbor in the tenor. And then we have F, A, D, and F. Just taking your tonic triad and putting it in first inversion. And here's where the cadence gets kind of interesting. I had to double check with the addition of the chorale that I am... Uh, looking at and this is in fact a C natural so this feels like it's preparing for a half cadence in the key of D minor and we're cadencing in the key of the minor dominant um, but I think that you could also make the argument that this uh, chorale or this is also a plagal cadence in the key of A minor I do think it's a half cadence though it just feels like everything is in place for this to be a half cadence it's just the only thing that we have going for us here is C natural rather than C sharp. So I do think this is a minor dominant, and this is an example of a minor half cadence. Um, but you could analyze this in the key of A minor, and if that were the case, this would be a plagal cadence where we have a four chord going to a one chord, or even a two chord going to a one chord if you include this F, or sorry, D, B, D and F. So either way, there's something interesting going on here. But yeah, I think this is a minor half cadence. Uh, the more that I listen to it, the way that the melody resolves, it feels like this E wants to go down to D. The fifth of the chord being in the melody is typically a hallmark of a half cadence in box chorale writing. And it just so happens that it's a minor chord, not a major chord. Very interesting. I'll leave it at that. But moving on to the next phrase, we are moving back to the key of D minor and it ends with a perfect authentic cadence so starting the phrase off we have e c sharp e and g sorry let me go ahead oh never mind we're still in the key of d minor here so i didn't have to mark anything there for some reason i rewrote d minor in my notes so i was about to write d minor again which might have confused you as if we hadn't modulated but yes this is a seven chord in first inversion C sharp diminished over E, passing tones in the lower voices before we get C sharp E, A and G, which is five, six, five. Just this extended dominant chord going on here where we have seven going to five. It's not really a chord progression because the chords function the same way and they contain mostly the same pitches. But yeah, that's just sometimes we see seven go to five over the span of multiple beats of the harmonic rhythm. E is a chord tone, so we don't have to mark it. And then we get D minor, D, A, D, and F, which is our tonic triad and root position, passing seventh in the alto. And then we get D, G, B flat, and E, which is E minor seven flat five over D, um, two, four, two. We would expect that to go to a five chord in first inversion. Wouldn't you believe it? We get another 
minor dominant chord with C natural. It looks like this should be C sharp, and maybe we'd have like a descending chromatic bass line here, but no, this is a C natural. We have C natural A, doubled C natural, and E, which is a five chord and first inversion. It just so happens to be minor, so it's really cool we see the minor uh, dominant occur twice, especially in close proximity to one another. But afterwards we get C, F sharp, a and D. This is another 4 2 chord. This would be 5 4 2 of 4, another tonic operating as the dominant of the subdominant. It happens to be 5 of G minor, and we would expect it to go to G minor in first inversion because it's a 4 2 chord, and that's exactly what it does. We have B flat, G, B flat, and D, which is a G minor in first inversion, 4 6. We then get A, A, G and C sharp, which is like a 5-7 chord without the fifth. G is a passing seventh, but it's a chord tone. E fills out the chord here on the end of the beat. And then we get our tonic triad and first inversion. On the next beat, we have F, A, D, and F, 1-6. Passing tone in the bass. Actually, four non-chord tones happening here. So when we see four voices moving off the harmonic rhythm, Statistically, there's going to be a subdivided chord progression going on here. So we have E, G, C sharp, and E. That's a seven chord in first inversion, seven, six. And then we would expect our tonic triad and root position here because this pattern of one, six going to seven, six going to one, very common in box chorale writing. This pattern of two similar chords that are separated by an inversion, bridged by a chord that is a diatonic step below in first inversion is very common pattern in Bach, especially with one and seven chords. Um, but yeah, tonic triad and root position here, D, A, D, and F. Um, the chord briefly goes to root position here where it changes to F in the bass. And then we get G, B flat, D, and E, which is E minor seven flat five in first inversion. We know that Bach loves two, six, five chords, especially in cadential contexts. E is a chord tone, so we don't have to mark it. A, A, C sharp, and E, which is our five chord, A major. A little delayed seventh here going on that turns into the 4-3 suspension at our 4-3 suspension perfect authentic cadence, where we have our tonic. Um, G and E are non-chord tones. D, F, A, and D. D minor in root position. All right, moving on to our last phrase, we have the most interesting cadence in the entirety of the chorale. We end in the key of C major, but we end on a four chord, and there's really no way of sugarcoating this. We actually end on the four chord, which is super unusual. We've had some wacky cadences in box chorale writing up until this point, but this is a particularly unusual one. Um, we still have a little bit more to analyze on this page, though. We start off in the key of F major. We'll say that D minor is our sixth chord in the key of F major. Then we have D B flat, D, and uh, F, which is B flat major over D, that's 4, 6, passing 7th in the tenor before we get E, G, C, and G, which is our 5 chord and first inversion, C major. C is a chord tone, so we don't have to mark it. And then pardon me while I get my papers in order. Thank you so much for watching the video. It really means the world to me. Uh, this is a lengthy corral, but I'm happy we're making good time with it because I was worried that it was gonna take really long, but I'm looking at the timer and for a corral of this length, I've spent considerably, amount, uh, considerably longer periods of time recording videos for, um, for, yeah, for corrals of this length. So I'm happy that I'm making good, good headway with it. But yeah, so now we start the uh, next, uh, the last system off with F major, F, A, C, and A, which is our tonic triad in the key of F. It's also our four chord in the key of C. We have this sort of F major idea from the previous page that elides with this rising C major idea here in the melody on, the, on, on this page. Passing tone in the bass, passing seventh more specifically, and then we have uh, D, D, F, and B, which is uh, B diminished over D, 7, 6. I guess you could technically analyze this as 5 as well. If you look at this, G is the root. I guess technically speaking, the 5 happens on the end of the beat as well. So I'll go ahead and erase that. Um, if you want to lump this whole chord together, you can call it a 5 chord or even a 5, 7 chord, but I think at that point it's pretty minute. It, we know that some type of dominant is happening here. But afterwards we get E, G, E, and C. Tonic triad and first inversion. 
neighbor tone in the bass uh, passing tone here in the alto before we get E, G, G, and B. This is where it's really interesting because we would typically expect this to be some type of B flat if we were ending on an F major chord, but no, it's B natural. So this would be some type of three chord, E minor. And then we get uh, C, which is a non chord tone, C, which is a non chord tone, uh, E, which happens to be a chord tone, and B. So it's almost like we get a tonic seventh here that we would expect a B flat in but no, it's B natural. So it's almost like we have a tonic seventh going on here that takes us to four, F major, F, C, F, and A. So what do we call this cadence? Because there really isn't vocabulary that explicitly describes cadences in the key that don't cadence on either the tonic, the dominant, or another chord uh, based on special circumstances like a deceptive cadence. So I've been calling these cadences subdominant cadences, but we haven't seen one specifically that has involved us um, uh, cadencing purely on the four without some type of allusion to the fact that we might have modulated very, at, at the very end. Sometimes we see that B flat, other times we don't, and we don't see any Bs to give us context. In this case, we have B to give us context, and we're very clearly in the key of C major. All right, so starting with the next phrase, we're moving back to the key of D minor. We end with a deceptive cadence, which I actually just briefly mentioned in the previous phrase. Um, we start off with G7, B, D, F and G, which is 5-6-5 five, in the key of C major. It's also 4-6-5 in the key of D minor. We have C sharp, A, E, and G, which is 5-6-5, five, five, A7 over C sharp. It's a very common chord progression, especially subdivided with this melodic minor going on. Um, we always have at least the leading tone connecting the four and the tonic here, except for that one time where it didn't. But then we get our tonic triad here, or at least our tonic triad in reference D, A, E, and F with the 9-8 suspension here. And um, by the time Bach resolves, the bass changes. So technically speaking, B flat and uh, B flat here change the chord to a 6 chord, but I still think we resolve to our tonic. Afterwards, we get G, B flat, D, and E. 6 here takes us to 2. Um, 2, 6, 5, E minor 7, flat 5 over G. We know that Bach loves 2, 6, 5 chords, especially over in cadential situations, and they typically take us to uh, 5, which it does here. A, A, C sharp, and E. A major in root position. G is actually a chord tone, so I will not mark it there. Sorry, it just felt natural to mark, but uh, it is a chord tone to E minor 7 flat 5, so I will not mark it. And then we cadence not on D minor like we would expect, but B flat major, which is what makes this a deceptive cadence. B flat, F, D, and D. Moving on to the last phrase, we get a fairly typical uh, perfect authentic cadence in the key of D minor. We stay in the key of D minor, no uh, modulations. We start off with A, A, C sharp, and E, which is our 5 chord passing tones in the bass and the alto, C sharp, A, E, and E is just taking our five chord and putting it in first inversion, no need to reanalyze, or reiterate the Roman numeral, sorry, A is a chord tone so we don't have to mark it. We then have D, A, E, and F, another 9-8 suspension here, I'm still going to mark it as one even though on the end of the beat we get B flat, um, which turns our chord into a 6-6 six, six chord, B flat major over D. We then have E, B flat, C, and G, which is, sorry, not C natural, C sharp from earlier in the measure, which is C sharp minor, uh, no, C sharp fully diminished over E, which is 7, 6, 5. Um, you could even analyze this as 5, 4, 3 if you wanted to, if you heard this A here as like a 5, 4 resolution or like suspension because it's like a diminished fifth going to a perfect fourth. Um, but yeah, I think it's really six of one, half dozen of another here, because they're both dominant functioning chords, and they both consist of mostly the same pitch content. Regardless, next beat, E, A, A, did I read that right? E, A, A, and F. I do think that this is a lower suspension under something, like a, I guess it would be like a 9-10 suspension here under the melody. 
Um, so I'm going to say that it is a tonic triad in reference, even though that Bach is uh, introducing the B flat by the time it resolves anyways. G is also a non-chord tone, so technically speaking, you could analyze this as uh, you could analyze it as six six again, or you could even analyze it as um, four four three. Really, at that point, again, it's just minutia. They both uh, function the same way and consist mostly of the same pitches, so it's really not a big deal. We then get D, G, B flat, and G, which is like a four chord and second inversion. Kind of an interesting chord to see here. Uh, C sharp is a non chord tone, F is a non chord tone, E is a non chord tone, and A is a non chord tone. I think we're getting some type of dominant here, and I'm going to say that it's a 5 6 5 chord. It just makes the most sense here. A7 over um, C sharp. And then we get, uh, let's see, next beat, we get D, F, A, and D. So that's just our tonic triad and root position. G sharp's a non chord tone, F is a chord tone, B natural is a non chord tone, and D is a non chord tone. So here we have a secondary dominant, G sharp fully diminished seventh, which is uh, the leading tone chord to five, which is A, because G sharp is the leading tone to A, and A is our five in the key of D minor. So this is sort of just a sub for, um, it would be a sub for four or a sub for two. And we get A, E, C, oh, sorry, A, E, a and C sharp, which is our five chord, how we would expect it to resolve. F is a passing tone. G is our chordal seventh. It turns into a 4-3 suspension over our final tonic triad, which is major, as most of Bach's minor chorales end with major chords. D major, D, F sharp, A, and D. Tonic triad, root position. That's today's analysis. What a lengthy video. Not as long as some of the other corrals that I've analyzed. I know I have a corral on my channel that I took an hour and 45 minutes to analyze, which was an absolute uh, marathon to run through, especially in one sitting. But um, yeah, I've not been feeling super well the last couple of days, so I had to piecemeal the analysis and the recording into three separate sessions, right? I had to record in one session and analyze over two sessions because it's just hard for me to focus. But let's talk about what's going on in this corral that is a big enough takeaway to make it unique um, in terms of its own uh, profile. So we have minor dominance in this corral, which we could find here and here as well. Both very interesting. This minor half cadence is also uh, super interesting as well. Definitely don't forget that. We have tonic um, chords operating as five of four all over the place here. Here's an example of one. Here's an example of one. I feel like there are a couple more. Here's an example. Did I just mark that? No, yeah, there's three of them just on this page, which is convenient for the point I was trying to make. Um, other than that, we have augmented triads abounds. We have a uh, three chord here. We have augmented triad here, and I mentioned all the augmented triads as we saw them. We have an augmented triad here as well. Um, we have um, subdominant cadence, like a really true subdominant cadence here on the third phrase, uh, here on the third page, third to last phrase. That's what I was trying to say, where we end on an F chord in the key of C. I even said that this could potentially be a Lydian cadence, which um, would imply that it was just an F major scale with a B natural. Um, just another possibility because it is an unusual cadence, M might as well theorize about it. And we also have a double suspension, which I marked somewhere. I think it happens here where we have the three, uh, sorry, four, three and the nine, eight suspensions happening at the same time. Um, but I think those are the big takeaways from this corral. I'm sure there are smaller things that if you're focused on other parts of box writing, you can take away as well. But I'm going to cap the video off on those thoughts. If you're interested in following me along on the journey to analyze all of Box Corral harmonizations, feel free to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification icon, and like the video as well if you enjoyed the content. Thank you so much for watching the video and supporting the channel by doing so. I look forward to tomorrow's analysis, and I hope you take care.